I'm back and this time I'm showing you guys how I made this rhinestone fringe denim jacket for my preteen niece. How cute is that? If you're not already subscribed, man, my I'm already getting tongue tied. But anyway, as I was saying, if you are not subscribed to my channel already, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. Watch the entire video. It's really simple and easy. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button and share with anyone you know who'd enjoy making one of these. So let's jump right in and get started. Here's the jacket I'm going to be designing. It's a jacket that my niece already owned. I'm going to be adding the fringe across the top here and I'm going to do two layers of the rhinestone fringe. Here's a fringe I'm using. It's from an Etsy shop called Glitter and Fringe. My sister actually owns this Etsy shop and I'm gonna have the link to, for you to purchase also at the bottom. This is where I'm lining it up. Isn't it gorgeous though? I'm in love with this fringe. Um, the glue we're using today is the um, Gorilla Fabric Glue. So now we're hopping over into design space. You're gonna choose text. You're gonna type in the words that you wanna put on the jacket. I'm typing in love, cause that's what my niece requested. You're gonna go to font. You're gonna click that drop down button and you're gonna type in Annie, A-N-N-I-E, and then search. And the text we're looking for is Annie Lou. Just select that right there. This is going to be cut on Glitter HTV. You're going to go up to the top and change the width to five inches. That's the size I measured that I wanted on this jacket. You can just measure out the size that you want it to cover on your jacket. So each one will be a different um, size. Now the most important part, you're going to weld. At the bottom right, just select weld. You want the letters to be basically fused together. You don't want them cut separate. Then you're gonna save your project so you don't lose it. That's another important step. You don't wanna lose your project, so save. Then we're going to send, oh, before you send to Matt, make sure you choose the correct machine that you're sending it to, then send to Matt. I'm gonna choose without Matt because I'm cutting on the Maker 3 and I'm using smart materials, so I don't need a mat. I'm not sure how to got here, but we're gonna flow with it. Make sure on the left side, you choose mirror image. Anytime you're using HTV, you want to mirror your image. That's a very important step too. I guess all these steps are important, but just make sure you mirror your image. So when you heat press it on there, it's you know facing the correct way. You're gonna send it to your machine. You're going to choose the Smart Iron-On Glitter. I have it saved at Favorites. If you don't, just click right over here on the right side where it says Browse All Material. And then you can search for your, in this case, it's going to be some sort of smart material since I chose no matte. And then, you see at the top there? Right there, Smart Iron-On Glitter. You see the star to the right there? You can click on that star and it'll save as your favorite. So every time you send to machine, it'll be right there at the top for you to choose. No guessing game and searching. And that's it. See that little red button? That's just warning you to mirror. Just as a reminder, because you know, sometimes we forget and mess up. So that's it. Send it to the machine and we're done. How simple is that? Now it's time to cut, weed, and press onto the um, jacket. So here we go. I loaded it in the tray. Um, so I used this material before, so it's not cut like straight. You see that? It's on a little slant. Sometimes my eye be a little crooked. But anyway, I still loaded it into the machine. When I press the button, you see the machine took it, so we're good to go. Here the Cricut is basically scanning to make sure that you have enough material before it starts cutting. So with the Maker 3 and the Explore 3, that's what they do. They scan, make sure you have enough material before it starts cutting. So once it loads, you see the little arrow that I just pressed, that's telling it to start cutting. I'm not going to necessarily keep the camera on here for y'all to have to be bored just watching it cut because you know, ain't nobody got time for that. Y'all already understand what it's gonna do. It's gonna cut out the letters, right? So here we go, nice and cut out. I just trimmed off the part, the extra material that I had there. I have my weeding tool. I just nick the corner and I peel down. It's pretty thick. And honestly, I feel like I wasted a lot of material. Look at the little end piece. But anyway, I'll show you what I did with some pieces that was left over that I still could use. You're gonna take your time. 
peel around those edges because you don't want it to really mess up. So here is what I'm talking about where look at all that empty space there. I could use that for something else. So I laid it right back down. I'm just going to press it down, put it to the side. Even though it's smart material, it won't be able to like load in like that again, but I can use a mat and cut that extra material. So I'm going to save it. Now you're going to see words that you ain't seen me put in the Cricut, but don't worry about that. I filmed this part way before I did the recording for the video, but I wanted y'all to see how I did it anyway. So I was making two separate jackets here. You see, I lay it back down, try to like smooth it with my hand a little bit. Cause if you don't have to, don't waste no material, no matter what brand it is, it's still our money. Let's try to put it aside. You never know. You could find a small project and got, you could use a little little piece. If you want to dot an eye, make a little heart or something, just save it. So I made sure the design is at the end and then I'm not clipping off the design I'm actually using today. Took a little scissors from the side and trimmed that piece off. So I can use it next time. You never know. Don't waste. Now I'm finished weeding out the big pieces and the edges. And I'm going to show you the small pieces. I know sometimes it's hard to the eye because, you know, I don't see that good either. I got to wear glasses to see far. So I understand. So what you're going to do is you're going to bend it right where the little holes are. And you're going to see it. You probably don't see it in the camera. But when you do it at home, you'll be able to see it better. See how you bend and then it'll show you the line. And you just weed that little piece out. That worked for me. I understand. I don't know what happened, but I used to have 20-20 vision, but um, that went down the drain with age. Now, I got four eyes, but it's okay. Bend it, like I said, and then you'll see it. See? This part actually showed on camera. Once I bent it, it kind of peels up just a little bit for you to see. Now, my weeding tool is a little bent at the tip. Wear and tear is okay. That just means I use it. So every time I pick up a piece... It kind of snagged and held on to that piece, but no big deal. Just peel it off and throw it to the side. Um, if you're a real organized crafter, which I am not, I will clean up the mess later. Get a little, um, one of those little finger thingies to hold your weeding pieces so that you're not just dashing it on the side like I do. And this is why I always have a big mess to clean up. So we're at the end. This other one actually says wifey. It's for another jacket that I'm making. See that? Look out lovely I like weeding some people don't like weeding but I like it so I just clipped off the piece because I'm going to use them for two separate things but for today's project we're going to be using the love there you go there you go now with the what is this called again I don't got a good memory if you know me already you know I ain't got a good memory um the, the, the fringe, there we go. The diamond or glitter fringe, whatever you want to call it. So what I did, I measured how far it goes and just about four inches because she wants the words underneath the fringe and not above the fringe. So I want to make sure when I lay it down, it's not blocked by the fringe and you can actually see it on the jacket. So now I know when I press it, it has to be under four inches from that little sole top right there. And you lay it down. This is still sticky, so I don't necessarily need anything to stick it down. It looks a little slanted. Like I told y'all, my eye ain't good, but I'm going to fix it before I, you know, press it down. I'll straighten it out. I promise. I promise. So here we are. We're going to turn on the auto press. I already turned it on. Then we're going to set it to 330 degrees for 30 seconds. Also, if you want to save this setting on your auto press, change the settings, put it to 330 degrees, change to the, your 30 seconds, and then you can choose which number setting you see at the top. It has one, two, three, and four, and hold down that number, and you're good to go. So here, I pull down the press, and I'm just going to heat the jacket for about five seconds. With the auto press, now you just you use one finger and tap it up, and it'll open right up. So now that I preheated that, I'm going to measure again to make sure... I'm laying it in the right place. And this time, I'm going to lay it straight like I promised. I don't want to give my niece no little crooked jacket because then she's going to be very mad at me. See that? 
and if it doesn't stick down oh lord i'm in new york city i apologize for whatever's in the background you can use that um heat safe tape to press it down and hold it in place but this is actually staying really well so i'm going to bring it down you just click down on the handle and the auto press already adjusts to the pressure so you're good to go so here now you see you guys is counting down on the side i was thinking about speeding this up but it was only like 30 seconds so we're gonna talk through it because i want you to also see how it opens up once the project is done Ta -da, ta -da. we're good to go four three two open sesame and the auto press opens up on its own so you're going to let it cool just for a little bit and then you're going to peel it off i don't know why every time i peel i'll be scared i don't know maybe because paper crafting is my thing and this is not but i'm getting better with this peel it off i wanted to do this part first just because I didn't want to heat press on the um, fringe and the glue and like warm it back up. So here's the thing with this glue. You can let it sit for like 20, 30 minutes when you do the first line and then do the second. But you have to give it 24 hours to cure. All right, guys. And also, I'm going to double check the time that it says before you should wash um, the clothes so 24 hour and it says to wait three days before you wash or iron where the glue is okay so what i did now i took the glue and i made a line across straight across because hmm, you know what depending on the type of crafter you are do a piece by piece i am kind of impatient so i went straight across but i'll tell you what i did wrong like i kept pulling and didn't realize I pulled it from the beginning. So I'm going to have to drag it right back. Also, just like any, I don't know if you guys have ever used Gorilla Glue. It kind of drips. So when you put that glue down after using it, do not lay it on the jacket or anything that you have to use again. Lay it on the mat or maybe a piece of cardstock. So if it drips, it's not messing up anything you're using. So as I'm going across, you can like hold it down. Because remember, this is a very like sticky tacky glue so it will move so that's why we got to give it some drying time before we do that second layer now as you can see all the way to the right and i did not see where i started it's kind of pulling away from the beginning and i'm gonna realize a little bit after and i'll fix it also what i'm doing here sometimes the fringe will flip up so really take your time don't rush see i'm pressing it down and that's when i realized it shifted a little so i'm gonna pull it back press it down and hold it so take your time and i'm just adjusting to kind of make sure that it's actually straight i don't want a crooked jacket you know and also uh, my sister actually made this for me in a different style i believe and she made one for herself and my other sister. And this is where I got the idea to make it because my niece liked mine. So I decided to make one for her too. And this is actually my first time making one of these jackets. So I'm proud of myself. Now, here's another tip. Use a smaller scissors. I tried this big clunky scissors and it's a, it's a like real narrow space in between. So I had a little bit of a hard time. It's best to use a smaller scissors and it doesn't take much effort to clip it. So you don't need like um, one of those wire cutters to clip this. You can use a regular scissors and it'll be good. So because I'll be a little scary when it comes to gluing things, I just dab some extra glue on the ends just to make sure it stays. And because this is the lower level, you won't really see it when I put the um, next layer on top of it. So now just press down, make sure it's straight. Remember I said, let it dry. This is a video, so I'm coming back after my 25 minutes. And then this time around, I'm going to put the glue on halfway, not all the way. We're gonna do halfway. And I tried to put like squeeze it out a little bit thicker of an amount. The glue is clear. You're not going to really see it. It doesn't look messy at all. 
It looks really, really, really good. Because while I'm talking to y'all now, I'm looking at the jacket. So you're going to start at the beginning. And as you're pressing, remember to keep a little pressure at the beginning. See the thick, there I go with the thick scissors again. But when it's in my hand, it's a little easier. But believe you me, try a little a smaller or a thinner pair of scissors. So we're going to press it down. And hold the end a little bit as we go along the line. Now, one strip of the diamond fringe. I don't like it. It looks a little too plain, and that's why I'm doing two. Also, if you want to do a little more, I always believe the more, the merrier. The fuller it is, the nicer it looks. So, But it's also up to you or whoever you're making the jacket for because everybody has their own style. Not you know, Some people don't like a lot. But I do like two or more layers of fringe. It just looks real nice and full. So that's my halfway mark. I'm using the scissors just to like press it down because I noticed as I was going across, it felt like I was, how do I explain it? Like bending, bending the fringe where like it's gluing at the top instead of the flat back of it. So I was just straightening it out so it's laying flat and it stays that way. So now here I am like unraveling so I don't have to do it as I go along. So I unravel and straighten out the fringe before I put the glue on there. And remember as you're going, try to hold down the beginning part where you're at and place the glue, um, not when you're placing the glue, but when you're pressing down the fringe. So now this time, remember I didn't go all the way across, I did halfway. So I raise it up to the last point of where the glue is and slowly, very slowly and generously add some more glue. Now I didn't really smell this glue too much, but you guys know with a lot of the Gorilla Glue that's kind of strong. So make sure you're in an area that has a little bit of ventilation, but it wasn't strong to me. So here we go, you're gonna press it down again and go across. So the main thing for me was just trying to make sure it was straight. So that's what you see me there and I don't know how I got my little face in the camera. Looking a little dry, but excuse me. I was here to craft, not to look cute. And then you press that down as you go. Simple. So again, now that I got to the end, you can also, maybe to be on the safe side, measure it out before instead of cutting when you get to the end. Because look, when I go to clip it, it start raising up off the coat. And then again, I have the big doofy scissors. So that kind of slowed me down. And it took the fringe off of the area that I did cut. I grabbed another scissors and it was just equally as big and stripped. So I had to end up going back and getting a smaller scissors so I can go in there and cut and it doesn't mess up because once it kind of pulls and tugs from one end, it'll mess up the other end. So you want to keep it as straight as possible. So you see I'm fixing it back here because I was like tugging at it a little bit when I was trying to cut it. <clears throat> so you want to be careful when you get to that part. See, now I'm showing you at the end here. I just need to clip it off of right there. And those scissors just wasn't it. So I'm going to run off and get a smaller size scissors, which is actually the scissors I use to cut my sticky things. It's a Fisker scissors, but it's a non-stick scissors. Not saying it won't stick to glue. It's not for glue, but I'm just explaining the type of scissors I use. But just use something small. So now it fits right in that groove perfectly and I can just clip it off. See, nice and neat. And that, I have a little bit left. I was considering maybe like putting that fringe somewhere else, like maybe on the front pocket. I'm not sure yet, I haven't decided. See how full and nice it looks? Gorgeous. Now, like I said, I'm gonna remind you 
24 hours to sit over and let it cure don't forget so right um i was just flipping the other side to see if i would like it on the pocket haven't decided yet not too sure but that's it so simple so cute and if you do make it tag me guys have it, the completed jacket again guys if you're not subscribed go ahead and do so and hit that subscribe button thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you do make one don't forget to tag me at the craft print on all social channels so i can see how cute you made this i love it i love it see you guys next time happy crafting